The Battle of Chickamauga was fought during the Civil War and took place in northwestern Georgia on September 9th and 10th, 1863. It was the second bloodiest battle of the Civil War. During the battle, Jacob Miller, a Union private, sustained a bullet wound to his head. He survived and carried the bullet in his head for many years. This is his story in his own words. After being shot, I was left for dead, he recalled. When I came to my senses some time after, I found I was in the rear of the Confederate line. Determined not to become a prisoner, Jacob got up and using his gun as a staff, made his way off the battlefield. I suppose I was so covered with blood that those I met did not know I was a Yank, he said. Jacob continued walking until he struck an old by road. By this time, my head was swelled so bad it shut my eyes, Jacob later remembered. I could see to get along only by raising the lid of my right eye with my finger and looking ahead. Some bearers passing by saw Jacob and carried him to a field hospital. The surgeons examined my wound and decided it was best not to operate on me and give me more pain, as they said I couldn't live very long. The next morning, the Union troops decided to fall back. The doctors told Jacob he was wounded too bad to be moved. They assured him that if he was taken captive, he could be exchanged later. But Jacob was determined not to be taken prisoner. I made up my mind as long as I could to drag one foot after another, Jacob said. I got out of the tent without being noticed and got behind some wagons that stood near the road till I was safely away. I worked my way along the road as best I could. At one time, I got off to the side of the road and bumped my head against a low-hanging limb. The shock toppled me over. I got up and took my bearings again and went on as long as I could drag a foot, then lay down beside the road. Before long, wagons transporting the wounded began to pass by. One of the drivers asked if I was alive and said he would take me in as one of his men had died back a ways and he had taken him out. Jacob woke up the next day in Chattanooga. He was inside a long building. I was lying with hundreds of other wounded on the floor, almost as thick as hogs in a stock car, he said. From there, he was transported by wagon to Bridgeport, Alabama, but the trip wasn't easy. The jolting of the wagon hurt my head so badly I could not stand it, so I had to get out. My comrades got out with me and we went on foot. They walked 60 miles to Bridgeport, taking four days to get there. Once in Bridgeport, they caught a train to Nashville. Jacob laid down in the train car in a state of utter exhaustion. The sand had run out with me for the time being, he said. After nine months of suffering, Jacob finally got two doctors to agree to operate on his wound. They took out the musket ball, and Jacob remained in the hospital until the expiration of his enlistment on September 17, 1864. Seventeen years after he was wounded, a buckshot dropped out of the wound, and 31 years after, two pieces of lead came out. He was always sure to tell people that he blamed no one for his misfortune. The government is good to me and gives me $40 per month pension, he said. 